All right, Shalom. This is Brother Tazama coming at you with another lesson out here on the highways and hedges, teaching the gospel of the kingdom. Teaching, also teaching the, the message of repentance to our people, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelites that may look like the other nations. Okay? Locky, my phone started ringing. But you uh, Israelites that may look like the other nations, okay? We're teaching a message of repentance, trying to teach our people to return to the ways of the Heavenly Father, okay? Because we are now at the cusp of Jacob's trouble. So we're trying to do our best to, to prepare our people to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father. I said, and repent, okay? We know what time we're in, right? We know what time we're in, okay? If we're not in Jacob's trouble, we're at the cusp of Jacob's trouble, okay? But if we're not in it yet, we know it's not too far away. It's based on what's happening around the world, okay? The signs. That is spoken of throughout the scriptures. It's warning signs. Okay? Alright. I am going to go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30. Verse 6. Like Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. And it reads, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Verse 8, For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Okay? So we know, according to the scriptures, that Jacob's trouble has to come. All right? And it's going to come ready or not. Okay? Whether you're spiritually ready or you're not, it's going to come. Right? And like I said, this is why we're out here and making the epistles on YouTube and other media, uh, social media uh, platforms to encourage our people to, to repent. Okay? Because the end is near. Right? Our Lord. The Howard Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, is on his way back to get the, the, the uh, elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? I'm going to read that again. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right. Now, Jacob is obviously representative of the Israelites. OK. Now, both Jacob or the uh, the elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the wicked, are going to go through Jacob's trouble. OK. And that's Satan. Every day. I tried to do a lesson. Somebody got to be calling me on the phone. So I
All right. As I was saying, say every goddamn time I try to do a lesson, somebody's got to be calling me on the phone. Anyway, we'll read that again. Sort of lost my train of thought. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The elect of the nation of Israel is going to be saved out of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, like I said, along with the two-thirds, we're all going to be in Jacob's trouble. Okay? The two-thirds, all right? The two-thirds of the nation of Israel that are slated for destruction, death and destruction, right? They're going to be going through it, but they're not going to be saved out of it. The elect is going to be saved out of it. Right? But the Heavenly Father wants to try us like gold is tried in the fire. Okay? So we can come out pure. We can come out having been tried when this is all said and done because the Heavenly Father wants to know who's, the, who's faithful and who's not. Okay? Because we know that the righteous are going to be saved. Okay? For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, this is verse 8 of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Okay? Now this is this is a spiritual reference to breaking the yoke off of our neck. Right? Because obviously we're no longer in, in uh, captivity, a physical captivity. We're still in captivity nonetheless. Okay? But this is referencing a, a mental captivity. Okay? Because most of our people are captive. Okay? In their minds. All right? They're still calling themselves black people. They're still uh, considering the wall humpers over there in uh, wall humper land, the true people of the Lord. Okay, we know they're not. All right, we know that they're devils. Okay, we know that they're descendants of the Edomites. Okay, they're the, the wicked of the Bible. Right, they cannot be saved. The only nation that's not promised salvation upon the return of our Lord. Now we know. Some of our people are scattered amongst them, okay? There's some Israelites that may look like them that are over there and um, taking on the ways of the wall humpers over there, right? Heavenly Father says, I will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him because right now we're being served of the strangers, okay? We got to punch in on, on, on their clocks, right? Some of us are caring for their children. And we don't have any, we don't have any uh, sovereignty, okay? We don't have any autonomy as a nation, okay? We are subject to the, to the whims and will of, of uh, the Edomites, okay? The earth was given into their hands, okay? So that's still, it's a lot of given that we're still under the curses, that is, is what we're faced with right now in Babylon the Great. But upon the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, you know, he is going to make things right, okay? He's going to save us out of this, this hell, this living hell that we're in. Let's go to the book of um, Ecclesiasticus. Let's go to the book of... Uh, Do Daniel chapter 12. And it reads, And that at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay? Now, again, it makes another reference to our people being delivered. But not all of our people are going to be delivered on this side. Okay? This is referencing the elect of the nation of Israel. The one-third, if you will. Okay? The vast majority of our people are going to be destroyed. Okay? Because they're already destroyed their minds. 
So there's no way for them to come back to the Heavenly Father if it's not His will for them to do so. Okay? Because many of us, not all of us in the one-thirds, the hopeful elect, I like to refer to us as, were out there in the world doing wickedness for a period of time. Until the Heavenly Father quickened us with the Holy Spirit, woke us up, right? And uh, showed us the error of our ways, okay? Compelled, compelled us to, to come back to his, his, um, his, whole, his, uh, his righteous ways, right? But that was already preordained since the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world. Let's read that again. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay? Again, that's the elect of the nation of Israel that are going to be found written, written in the book on this side. Two-thirds are going to be destroyed on this side but they'll be reborn through the loins of the elect of our people once the kingdom of heaven is established, okay? There's going to be a whole lot of baby making taking place uh, once the kingdom of heaven is established. And this is how the wicked of our people are going to be saved, right? Like the scripture says, so all of Israel shall be saved, pursuant to the book of Romans chapter 11, okay? That's what that's talking about more proof that there is a, a literal hell, this place called hellfire, that the Christians, you know, uh, uh, threaten or, or uh, tell our people that, um, that are wicked, they're going to go to as a, as a judgment, right? We know hell doesn't exist. It's not biblical, but it refers to Hell, it refers to a hellish condition or the grave. Okay? It's not talking about a literal place of fire and brimstone. Verse 2 And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Okay? Those that are wicked, once they're brought back into the kingdom, the Heavenly Father is going to make it so. That they do be, uh, that they will be able to reflect on their wickedness. All right, when they had a chance to to repent before Jacob's trouble, or during even even during Jacob's trouble, okay, at the cusp of it, like like we are now, when they had that opportunity to turn to the Lord and repent, they chose not to. They chose to stay out there in the world and do wickedness, right? Let's go to the book of um, 2 Peter. Chapter 3, verse 10. Another day, or another reference to Jacob's trouble. It reads, but, that, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the hurt of the earth, Salakia, also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Another phone call. Wouldn't you know? Salakia for that. You read that again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night going to come suddenly, okay, without you knowing, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, okay, and this, this reference to the heavens is simply referring to the rulership of the heathen nations, okay, now we know Esau Edom is in full control of the world right now, okay, but he also has his tributaries, you know, heathen nations that are on board with his, um, with his philosophies and his doctrines, you know, the democracy and uh, that beast system, right? They're part of many of these nations. It says, um, and the element shall melt with fervent heat, 
the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And this is referencing the nuclear destruction, the missiles that are, that are going to come uh, here in Babylon the Great and destroy this place, okay? And destroy all you wicked jakes and you wicked heathens along with it. This place is going up in smoke. For those of us of the hopeful elect, our mosquitoes in this Those of us of the hopeful elect are hoping that this happens soon. We want to see this place destroyed because there's nothing but wickedness here in Babylon the Great. Let's go to the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 5. Okay? Because we see the signs, we know what's coming. We know good and damn well what's coming, what's, what's headed down the pike, right? So we got to prepare ourselves spiritually and mentally and emotionally and even physically for what's coming, okay? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7, and it reads, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. Okay? So this is saying, make no tarrying. Alright? Don't delay. Turn to the Lord now, while, while you still have a chance to do so. <clears throat> and put not off from day to day. Don't put off turning to the Lord. Okay? Because again, we see the times. Those of us with spiritual eyes and spiritual ears... <clears throat> To lock it. We see the time. We recognize the signs. Okay? Pursuant to the scriptures. Okay? So we're trying to get our spiritual house in order to prepare for the coming of our Lord. Okay? So we can be saved out of Jacob's trouble. We don't want to be a part of it. You know, like that. Because we know that the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be saved out of it. We're going to be protected by the angels of the Heavenly Father. Okay? And we're going to be in it, trying in it, because the Heavenly Father needs to try our faith. He needs to try our patience, right? Examine our belief and faith in Him and His only begotten Son in order to get through it. And this is why it's important to realize the importance of preparation, spiritual uh, uh, preparation. Okay? It's like a boxer. If you knew you were going up against the world champ as a contender, or anybody for that matter, any fight. Wouldn't you prepare yourself? Wouldn't you get your shadow boxing in order? Uh, your, your road work, your conditioning, right? Do your ab work to build up your your, uh, your abdomen. So, uh, you know, when you hit with uh, abdominal shots, you can take it, right? Because you don't just wake up one day, you know, uh, being in shape to take on a, a, a champion fighter. Right? It's a process. It's a long, tedious, diligent process where you have to train yourself and, and push yourself beyond the limits of um, just just push yourself beyond the limit. And, you know, the threshold of pain, the threshold of tolerance, right? In order to be great. Okay? And you're doing all that so you can last from start to finish or as long as you need to fight. Okay? Because you can't always go into a fight expecting to knock them out in the first round. I mean, that's the hope. That's the goal. But more times than not, you're going to have to be able to endure the entire 12 rounds. Well, if you're not in good physical condition to do so, then guess what? You're not going to be able to make it. Okay? So, again, it's a good analogy because this is what we need to do while we're in this, in this truth. We have to prepare ourselves spiritually with building up our faith, right? Reading the scriptures, praying, fasting, okay? Enhancing and fortifying our spiritual conditioning so we can make it through Jacob's trouble. All right? I'm going to read 7 again. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day, 
for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. Okay, and that wrath is going to be in the form of the plagues, okay? Famine, okay? Falling victim to teeth of wild beasts, right? Falling victim to you know, women being ravaged by evil men, wicked men, okay? If you don't have the protection of, uh, of the Lord in the form of a husband, right? You will be fair game. Okay, because you chose to do wickedness out there, right? And you made, you know, you, you, you procrastinated when it came to, to returning to the ways of the Heavenly Father because you wanted to do wickedness. Well, guess what? You're not going to be covered in that day. You're not going to be protected in that day. Okay? You're going to be fair game, right? You may end up on somebody's rotisserie because of the family. Okay, you just don't know. Let's finish. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Because when you're out there doing wickedness, it's easy to be content with doing wickedness because it appeals to the flesh. Right? You know, committing adultery, um, using drugs, okay, doing all manners of evil because it appeals to the flesh. That's why people do evil. Right? But in that security, you're going to lose your, you're going to lose your life, okay? Because you're not thinking about the Lord. The Lord is far from your mind, far from your heart, okay? But when the Heavenly Father decides to open up that, that um, uh, crack the skies, if you will, guess what? It's going to be too late to turn. It's going to be too late to repent, right? So what you have to look forward to is being destroyed. Because the Lord is not, the Lord's not playing. The Lord is not playing. He's going to destroy the wicked. Okay? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 55. And 6. And it reads, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Okay? So this is saying, don't wait. Seek the Lord now. Because he's not going to be around here much longer. He's not going to make himself available by way of his prophets, by way of these teachings, these epistles that the brothers are putting out around the clock, okay, on these various uh, media, media platforms. Okay, you're not going to be able to walk down the street where you once saw the prophets, okay, teaching the gospel, all right, pushing that, that message of repentance. You're not going to be able to find them, okay, because there's going to be a famine of the word that's going to come about, okay, thus saith the Lord, okay, because when you had time to pursue the Heavenly Father, pursue this word, you chose to continue doing wickedness, right? So the Heavenly Father is going to set you up for judgment, okay? Because you didn't listen. You didn't heed to the warnings that were being put forth by his prophets, okay? Verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon, okay? He says, let the wicked forsake his way. All right, to forsake your way means to stop doing wickedness. Quit doing what you're doing, right? Quit the offending behavior, okay? And the unrighteous man is thoughts. Purge your mind of the wickedness. Purge your mind and your heart of the urge to commit sin, right? And let him return. That means come back. This is how we know that this, is, this, this gospel, this word, is strictly for the Israelites because it means to come back. Those of us that were cast off, okay, he's imploring us to return, right? And he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, he will abundantly pardon. So the Heavenly Father is going to pardon us. He's going to show mercy um, on us if we come back 
with a contrite heart, right? Do what we're supposed to do. Follow his law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? It's that simple. It's that simple. So, knowing this, that we're at the cusp of Jacob's trouble, and the Heavenly Father wants us to come back to him, and we talked about faith, right? We're going to talk about it again, because that is what's going to, it's going to be um, uh, the primary part of your, your arsenal, as far as um, making it through, through Jacob's trouble, okay? First, face Salaki. First and foremost, the most important thing is establishing your faith, right? Because again, that is what's going to sustain you through Jacob's trouble. going to go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 but without faith it is possible to plead and it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him right so if you don't have faith especially in Jacob's trouble you're not going to please him okay if you displease him then you're not going to have that protection, okay? So you're going to be fair game to the heathens and the wicked two-thirds, okay? Like they say, like the saying goes, case of Rasara, okay? Let's read that again. But with, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh must believe that he is. You must believe that he's the power of, of the universe, okay? He's the power of the nation of Israel, okay? He is the... Um, the ancient of days, okay? There's no beginning and no end to the Heavenly Father, right? We know the Son is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, okay? You got to believe that he's going to save you out of Jacob's trouble, okay? You have to believe that you're going to be delivered by way of his Son, okay? The Deliverer, the Hawashah, who the world ignorantly calls Christ. You have to believe that during Jacob's trouble, his angels, okay, are, are going to encompass themselves around those of us who fear the Lord, all right? You have to be faithful in that you have to know that when the famine hits, that you're still going to be able to eat, right? You're still going to be able to drink, okay? This is a part of having faith, and this is what we need to demonstrate to the Heavenly Father in order for him to deliver us in order for him to preserve us during Jacob's trouble, okay? Preserve us to allow us to be delivered, okay? Now, granted, some of us will be martyrs, but um, many of us are going to endure. We're going to endure through Jacob, uh, Jacob's trouble because of our fervent faith, okay? Our belief in the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, okay? Let's go to the book of... Um, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 7. And it's another reference to faith. It just goes to show you just how important it is, right? The same recurring theme that occurs throughout the Holy Scriptures. All right? And it reads, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? We need to define what faith is. Let's go to, let's go back to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11. Verse 1. Okay, remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? 
You walking by faith, or you walking by sight? Well, we'll get to that. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, our belief in the Heavenly Father, obviously, we can't see the Heavenly Father. We can't see His only begotten Son. All right? Why do we believe? Faith. Right? Why do we believe that He's going to deliver us out of Jacob's trouble, faith, right? Pursuant to the scriptures, okay? It says, he shall be saved out of it. That's all we have to go on. That's all the evidence that we need, right? That is all the evidence we as Israelites need to know that we need, that we're going to be delivered from the Heavenly Father, uh, from Jacob's trouble by the Heavenly Father, by way of his son, his only begotten son, right? verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which, the by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Yahweh testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because Yahweh had translated him. For before his translation, he had his, he had this testimony that pleased Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump down to verse 7 because this is one more account of, or, or an example of the prophet showing faith in the heavenly father. Okay? which is the faith builder for us. Remember, the things written before time were written for our learning, okay? And this is how we learn to apply our faith and our belief in the Heavenly Father, okay? By faith, Noah, being warned of Yahweh by Shin Yahweh Shai, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith, okay? So the, th the same things that Noah did in terms of pro uh, prophesying, Lord of the people of impending doom and destruction by way of the flood, we're doing the same thing. But instead of the world being destroyed by the flood, obviously it's going to be destroyed by nuclear fire, okay? But we're still doing the same uh, uh, act or practice that our forefather Noah did, okay? He prophesied for over a hundred years, okay? He endured all the mocking, okay? The ridicule, the laughing, people talking shit, just like they do now. People looking at you with, with disdain, turning their nose up at you, right? Acting like they're better than you because you're out here on the highways and hedges, wearing a garment, preaching the word of the Lord, okay? A lot of people have a problem with that. So they're going to scoff. Okay, they're going to express their hatred through their actions. Okay, they're not going to believe what you're saying, right? Because it's not mainstream, it's not accepted by the masses, especially by the people in power, which are the Edomites, right? So why in the world would they want to believe this from a bunch of lowly so-called black people, prophets, right? So-called black males. Okay, who are the prophets of the Heavenly Father, the mouthpieces of the Lord, right? So we're lowly, we're in a lowly state, so we don't have credibility. Okay, the people that uh, uh, the vast majority of the world views as having credibility wear the neckties, they lead these, these multi-million dollar churches, right? They got thousands of uh, members in the church and the congregation. Those are the ones who have the pseudo credibility because they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. Because what they're teaching is, is uh, contrary to the Holy Scriptures, right? This is the doctrine of devils that they're pushing, but they got the, the whole world drunk on their wine, all right? Let's go to the book of Sirach. 
Ecclesiasticus. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible. Because this is a faith builder in and of itself. We're going to start at verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in the time of trouble. The only way you're going to constantly endure is if you have faith, okay? See, faith doesn't just happen overnight. Well, it could, okay, but it doesn't, it has to be, um, it has to be built up over a period of time, right? That's something that has to be strengthened, okay? So you're not going to just all of a sudden wake up and have this abundant faith, okay? Now, the Heavenly Father is going to have it so that some people will be um, a quickened in the last minute, right? But the vast majority of us who are already in this truth, we're building our faith up, right? through the teaching of the word, the reading of the Holy Scriptures every day, right? Teaching lessons, okay? Seeing signs and wonders, listening to the apostles and the elders, right? Seeing the Heavenly Father work miracles, seeing the Heavenly Father uh, fulfill the prophecies that are talked about in the Holy Scriptures. All these things are faith building, seeing the chariots in the skies, right? And this is, uh, this is what allows us to be able to constantly endure, okay? Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So we got to cleave unto him by way of this word, right? Pray, fast, okay? Knowing the name of the Heavenly Father, calling on it when we need to. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. It's kind of hard sometimes. When you see all this wickedness going on around you and you're seeing that you're being afflicted, Right? You got to go without some things. You got to lose your job. The Heavenly Father said, take it cheerfully. Right? Because I've been on the receiving end of it. You know? It was hard, but through faith, the Heavenly Father says, nah, I got you. Okay? I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure you eat. I'm going to make sure you can take care of yourself. For now. Okay? Until the next stage. Then the Heavenly Father may say, well, you know what? Now it's time to up the ante. All right? Now I want to see you prove your faith even more. Okay? And this is how you have to prepare yourself for Jacob's trouble, okay? You have to sort of detach from the comforts that um, you're, in, you're enjoying right now, okay? Because at some point, they're going to come to an end. They're going to be taken away from, you, right? All the modern-day conveniences that you enjoy, right? At some point, you're going to have to give them up, okay? But you have to take it cheerfully, all right? He doesn't mean walking around with a smile laughing. He just means in your mind. Reminding yourself that it's necessary, but you're good because the Heavenly Father's got you. Right? And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. We're still in the lower state. We're probably going to drop to even a lower state. You know, may, many of us are probably not going to have a roof over our head. We're probably going to have to run, like the, like the scriptures say, be as pilgrims, going from place to place. Right? The Heavenly Father is going to sustain us. Okay? Make sure we got food and water to drink. Okay? A place to lay our head. Right? And you got to remind yourself, this ain't, this ain't permanent. This is a temporary situation. In order to get to the kingdom of heaven, this is what we have to go through. We got to go through some hellish type conditions. Right? Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. All right? Through affliction, through suffering, the impurities are going to be burned out of us, okay? And when this is all said and done, we're going to be presented as chaste virgins to the, the Heavenly Father, right? The only begotten Son, okay? This is the goal. Rehearse the righteous acts. Walk away from sin. Permanent. Believe in Him and He will help thee. Order thy way of right and trust in Him. Okay, in order to trust in him, you got to have faith. You got to believe in him, right? Verse 7, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Okay? This is a very, very powerful scriptures, a set of scriptures, because this 
is what we need to do to make it through Jacob's trouble, right? He sort of outlines it, right? These are guidelines to make it through Jacob's trouble, right? So it's, 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 um, it's pretty deep when you think about it because these words are life, right? These words are what quickened us by way of the Spirit, okay? And this is why the Heavenly Father wants us to stay diligent in this word. Read as much as you can, study as much as you can, right? Because this is going to build our faith, right? We're going to get to know the attributes of the Heavenly Father and His only, only begotten Son. Okay? Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse six, uh, 56. It's locked up. Okay? Because you have to be able to identify the signs around you. Okay? This world is crumbling around us. And no one seems to be taking notice. Okay? Well, the elect of the nation of Israel is noticing. All right? Even some heathens are, are noticing. Okay? But the vast majority of people are still asleep. And they're going to remain asleep. Okay? Until stuff really, really starts happening. Okay? That's what's going to really get people's attention. And then, guess what? It's going to be too late for a lot of them. A lot of them, it's going to be too late to, to return to the Lord. Because the Heavenly Father says, no, nah, no, nah, you tear it. Okay? You didn't take advantage of the opportunity when I was available to you by way of the prophets. Okay? So it reads, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern the time? So they can discern in the face of the sky, right? They can look at the sky, see ominous storm clouds coming, right? They're gathering, right? So what do they do? They take appropriate action. They find cover, okay? If they're out there on a the golf course. They see, they hear the thunder. They see the lightning. They see those ominous clouds. Guess what? Hey, we got to stop this game. I don't want to get struck by lightning. Or I don't want to fall victim to a, a torrential downpour, right? Have my, my, my clothes drenched, soaking wet from rain. So you run for cover. You'll find shelter in your car, go inside of a building, what have you, okay? But you can discern the time, what's about to happen, okay? Likewise with the uh, uh, being able to look at the earth, here on earth, right? You look at the trees. We see the changing um, of the leaves in terms of color during the fall. We know, guess what? It's the fall season and winter's coming. Okay, because we see that nat natural progression of the leaves, leaves going from yellow to red, reddish, brown, until they die and then they fall, right? And that's a sign that winter's coming, right? So you take the appropriate action. Oh man, winter's coming. I gotta find shelter, okay? I gotta I gotta buy my winter clothes, okay? I gotta get some heat for my home. I gotta get firewood, I gotta get the chopping, right? We got a fireplace to heat the house, but we don't have wood, okay? But we know winter's coming because the, the, the leaves are falling off the trees, all right? It's getting colder here on the earth, right? So people make the appropriate um, uh, preparation in order to prepare, in order to prepare for the winter, for what's coming. But yet, the hypocrites can't discern the time, okay? Because there's signs that are, be sh that are being shown all around us, right? Earthquakes in diverse places, the threat of famine, okay? I just read this morning that Lake Powell, one of the biggest reservoirs in this country, drying up. It supplies, you know, a, a good portion of the Southwest, folks in California, drying up. Right? This is all prophecy. Okay? Um, hepatitis outbreak happening worldwide, affecting kids. Kids are dying. Okay? This is a part of the plague that the Heavenly Father talked about the Holy Scriptures. Okay? You have to be able to discern the times that you're in. Nobody wants to do that. They're just oblivious to everything that's going on around them because they are preoccupied in wickedness. Right? They are preoccupied and satisfying the flesh, right? They're, they're, they're preoccupied and satisfying their lusts. 
okay? And they don't see that the world around them is, is, is collapsing, okay? They don't see that this, this rulership of Esau Edom is, is crashing. It's coming to a, a grinding halt, right? They don't see that Esau Edom is going to come down with great wrath on, the, on you Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay? And then those of you who be like unto the speckled bird, right? See, we're going to be the ones that they're going to be um, after, okay? Like the scriptures say, he's going to come down with great wrath on the children of Israel, okay? So there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, a lot of bloodshed in Jacob's trouble because of this devil, okay? The so-called white man, he saw Edom, all right? You got to recognize he's your enemy. That's a sign, okay? Based on his actions, what he's doing. He doesn't mean you any good. Hey, he's never meant this any good. Right? So, you got to prepare yourself accordingly. Right? You have to prepare yourself spiritually because the Lord is coming. He's on his way. He is on his way. And if you don't prepare yourself spiritually, well, you're as good as dead. Because the Lord is going to destroy you. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Okay? Now, if you don't have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of these holy scriptures, then you're as good as dead. You're walking dead men and women. Okay? With that, I want to say all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, pushing the doctrine of truth to the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And in Salakia, I forgot to say all praise. Give praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son at the start of the lesson. Man. Anyway, better late than never. Um, until next time, I want to say Shalom.